So, this is for an ideal cycle where we have taken the isentropic efficiency of the turbine and the compressor to be 100 percent. Now, if we relax that assumption and uh, assume that uh, it is not equal to uh, 1 or 100 percent, then the expressions that we derived before look like this. Okay. The specific power now uh, as before specific power depends on T3 over T1 and Rp, but the efficiency now depends on T3 over T1 as well in addition to Rp. So, uh, the insights notice that these insights that we have obtained here are possible only with an air standard cycle. Now, notice that this derivation allowed us to identify T3 over T1 and Rp as the uh, parameters that control the performance of the cycle. Okay. Now, by looking at this expression and this expression like this, we are now uh, able to understand the effect that these parameters have on the cycle. The effect of pressure ratio is generally to increase the efficiency. The effect of pressure ratio on the specific work is to increase it in the beginning, but beyond a certain value depending on T3 over T1, the specific output begins to decrease. So, that is the pressure ratio at which we would ideally like to operate, where the efficiency is uh, high and the uh, specific work is the highest possible for that given value. So, these are insights that we are getting from the air standard analysis. Okay? that is very important and that was the objective that we started out with when we started uh, discussing air standard cycle. Now, in the case of the actual cycle, uh, obviously both the uh, isentropic efficiency of the turbine and the compressor are involved and if you look at this, these are shown uh, using the dashed line here corresponding to eta t equal to 0.95 and eta c equal to 0.9. You can see that the general trends are the same. Uh, of course, efficiency now depends on T3 over T1, but efficiency generally increases with Rp. These curves also have Rp going from 5 to 40. So, efficiency generally increases with Rp, but at higher values depending on the value of T3 over T1, efficiency also begins to decrease even though we are increasing Rp. Okay, so, here you see it increasing, but beyond a certain point efficiency begins to uh, decrease. <coughs> efficiency reaches a maximum here for 40, it does not decrease. Here also it seems to reach uh, a maximum, does not decrease, but efficiency certainly begins to decrease for T3 over T1 equal to 4 at the higher uh, values of Rp. If you look at specific work, again you can see that it reaches a maximum and then begins to decrease. So, if you look at specific work, you can see that it reaches a maximum then begins to uh, decrease. Here also you see the same. Here it is more or less flat, but yeah, you can see that it reaches a maximum, then begins to decrease with Rp. So, whatever trends we saw with the ideal cycle, we are seeing in the actual cycle also. Of course, the, uh, the assumption that we have still not relaxed is that we are assuming the uh, air to be uh, calorically perfect that is actually not uh, realistic in the present application because the temperature uh, ranges over uh, such a uh, I mean ranges from 300 Kelvin to 1600 Kelvin that is a wide range and uh, assuming Cp to be constant, Cv to be constant in this range is actually uh, somewhat unrealistic. So, we need to actually relax that assumption also which we will do next. But the insights that we have obtained from uh, the ideal cycles more or less hold for the real cycle also. So, uh, the approach that we will take with Braden cycle is uh, similar to or same as what we did for the Rankine cycle also. We will start with the basic cycle, look at the performance metrics, uh, specific work, first law efficiency, second law efficiency, exergy destruction in the components and then identify scope for improvement and then improve in a systematic manner and at, uh, after each improvement evaluate the performance, see um, how it has changed, has it improved or has it become worse and then, and then identify until we end up with the best possible cycle. Okay, let us now uh,
talk about uh, using air table ok. So, I, uh, I just mentioned that the temperature range encountered in the uh, gas turbine application and uh, uh, spark ignition engine or auto cycle and compression ignition engine or air standard diesel cycle is actually uh, uh, far too wide for the uh, for the calorically perfect assumption to hold. Remember, uh, when we uh, looked at um, internal energy of, uh, of ideal gases, uh, we said that uh, internal energy U is a function of temperature and uh, pressure. And we argued that for gases, the dependence on P is very weak. So, we may essentially assume this to be a, a function of a temperature alone. Now, this would be called a thermally perfect gas. Now, if you assume uh, that U is actually a uh, linear function in T, that means uh, U is equal to say Cv times T, then we have the so called calorically perfect assumption which is what we have been using so far. And uh, as I said, this is not uh, realistic for the uh, applications that we are looking at now. So, we will relax this, but still assume, in, assume the gas to be thermally perfect, which is actually quite acceptable. There is no uh, problem there for gases. Okay. So, assuming a gas to be thermally perfect is quite acceptable and that is what we are uh, going to do. Okay. Of course, uh, ideal gas equation of state may also be assumed to hold uh, for this range of temperatures and that is also again uh, realistic, there are no issues there. And uh, remember, H is equal to U minus, I am sorry, U plus PV or U plus RT. Now, the air table looks like this. Okay. So, this table lists uh, the specific enthalpy uh, and uh, specific internal energy and uh, specific entropy at standard condition. So, this is nothing but uh, S at uh, the given temperature and the reference pressure. Okay. So, it lists H, U and S0 as functions of temperature. So, this entropy is nothing but entropy corresponding to this temperature, but at the reference pressure. Okay. But you must bear in mind that at any uh, temperature here, H is always equal to U plus RT. So, if you want to evaluate the uh, specific Gans constant that has been used while compiling this table, you only have to take H and u at any entry h minus u divided by t gives you the uh, specific gas constant that has been used while compiling this table okay but that is actually good practice also okay notice that in keeping with our calorically perfect assumption h and u are both uh, functions only of temperature so as i said the air table lists values for h and u for air at different temperatures and values of specific entropy at the reference pressure are also provided. Now, the value for specific entropy at any other pressure, same temperature, but any other pressure may be evaluated from TDS relationship like this. So, delta S uh, equal to, uh, <coughs> so we have from the TDS relationships, delta S or we may write like this, I am sorry. Uh, TDS equal to VDP. So, if I divide through by uh, T, I get DS equal to uh, DH over T minus V over T and if I use PV equal to RT, so remember PV equal to RT, so V over T becomes equal to R over P, so minus R dP over P. So, if I want to evaluate uh, entropy at any other uh, pressure, but the same temperature, then since uh, H is dependent only on temperature, this term will go away. We can integrate and end up with this expression. Okay, S of T comma P equal to S at uh, T comma P ref 
minus or natural log p over p ref. Now, in case the process is an isentropic process, then of course, uh, there is no change in entropy. So, S0 of uh, T2 minus S0 of T1 minus R natural log P2 over P1 is equal to 0. In fact, uh, it would have been better if we had written instead of 2, if we had written this as 2S. But anyway, that is understood because we have said that this is an isentropic process. Remember, we are very much interested in isentropic process because if we take uh, the isentropic efficiency to be 100 percent, then we have only isentropic processes in the cycle. If you take the isentropic process to be less than 100 percent, then we still need the isentropic state to work out the uh, either the actual state at the exit of the compressor or turbine or calculate the power. Okay. So, either way we need to uh, be able to handle isentropic processes and with varying Cp how do we do that is what we are uh, looking at right now. So, basically what we have done here is uh, we have taken two states uh, S2 of uh, T2 comma P2 and S1 of T1 comma uh, P1 and we have said that going from S1 to S2 is an isentropic process which allowed us to write this expression. Okay. So, if you rearrange, you can actually write this expression like this P2 over P1 equal to E raised to this quantity divided by E raised to this quantity. Notice that this depends only on temperature, this also depends only on temperature. So, we can in fact write this as the ratio of two pressures PR, the reduced pressure PR2 over PR1. So, P2 over P1 is equal to PR2 over PR1. Now, since PV equal to RT, we may write the ratio of specific volumes like this V2 over V1 is equal to this and for an isentropic process, I can replace P1 over P2 with PR1 over PR2. Now, if I regroup the term slightly differently, I can actually write this as a quantity in the numerator which depends only on temperature. Remember, PR2 depends only on temperature. So, and you have T which is of course temperature, same thing here. So, I may actually write V2 over V1 also as the ratio of Vr2 over Vr1, which are both dependent only on temperature. So, dependent only on and that is what the air table shows in the remaining two columns. So, you can see that Pr and Vr are listed in the air table, they depend only on the temperature. So, they are shown as a, a function of temperature. Of course, these values are not exactly the same as uh, what we have shown, they are scaled uh, suitably for use in the table, so that the numbers look uh, decent. Okay. So, this, these are the values that are shown here. Notice that these are applicable only for an isentropic process. They are not meaningful for any other process, they are meaningful only for an isentropic process. So, you must bear that in mind. Okay, now, let us see how uh, we uh, use the uh, uh, air table by means of an example. Okay. So, before we do that, let us just um, uh, recapitulate. PR and VR depend only on T. They are listed in the table after appropriate scaling. So, please do not use this expressions to evaluate them, they have been scaled further okay? and they are meaningful only for an isentropic process PR and VR. So, if state 1 and state 2 are isentropic states, then P2 over P1 equal to PR2 over PR1, if and only if 1 and 2 are isentropic. V2 over V1 is equal to VR2 over VR1, if and only if states 1 and 2 are isentropic. So, we have a compressor where air is compressed from 1 bar 300 Kelvin to 10 bar. The isentropic efficiency is 92 percent determine the power required and the exit temperature. So, the temperature at state 1 is given to be 300 Kelvin, 
which means we can retrieve <coughs> which means we go into the table with uh, 300 Kelvin and retrieve H to be 300.19 and PR to be 1.386. So, we retrieve H1 and PR1 <coughs> from the table. So, P2 over P1 is equal to 10. So, in case the compression process is isentropic, that means PR2S would have been equal to 10 times PR1. So, that would be 13.86. So, we, what we are doing is we are saying this P2S over P1 is equal to PR2S over PR1 that is equal to 10 which means that PR2S is 10 times PR1, so it comes out to be 13.86 for state 2S, not state 2, state 2S. Now, we go to the table again and corresponding to a PR value of 13.86. So, value of 13.86 falls between these two. So, by means of interpolation, we can actually retrieve the value for H. And if I required the value for temperature at the exit of the uh, compressor also. So, we use this value and then interpolate for H, interpolate for T if required. So, interpolate for, for H and T if required. So, if you do that, we can get H2S to be 579.865. Remember, this is H2S. PR is applicable only for an isentropic process. So, from the definition of isentropic efficiency, <coughs> H2S minus H1 divided by H2 minus H1 is equal to eta C. Eta C is given uh, to be 92 percent, right, except we know all quantities except for H2. So, we may evaluate H2 to be 604.185 kilojoule per kilogram and the uh, power required actual power required may be evaluated as h2 minus h1 specific power required may be evaluated as h2 minus h1 304 kelvin we are also asked to calculate the exit temperature so we go to the air table with this value of h 604.185 What is that? 604.185. We just uh, change color here. So, 604.185 falls between uh, these two entries in the table. So, we may interpolate and get the exit temperature to be 597 Kelvin. Five hundred ninety-seven Kelvin. So we can see that although PR and VR are applicable only for uh, isentropic processes, and the actual process need not be isentropic. Remember, here we have taken one two to be a non-isentropic process because uh, the uh, isentropic efficiency is given. It's adiabatic, but not uh, reversible. Okay. So you can make use of the uh, values of PR and VR from the table, and then evaluate the actual uh, quantities that are required for the uh, the process that is being executed okay <clears throat> so that is the usefulness of the air table it accounts for variation in cp with temperature and so it gives us much more accurate values for the quantities that we are calculating specific power efficiency and so on So, in the next lecture, we will work out an example involving the basic Brayton cycle and we will allow for property variation. So, we will not assume uh, Cp to be constant. So, we will do the calculation with the air table that would be the, for the basic cycle. Then we will analyze the performance parameters of the cycle like we did before in the case of the Rankine cycle and then keep going like that. <coughs>